Stamp out sleeping sickness, one health in action. In Uganda, thousands of people have been affected by sleeping sickness, a terrible parasitic disease that takes over the body of its victims until, as the name suggests, they have no energy, appear sleepy, and finally die. Back in 2006, the possible convergence of the two forms of sleeping sickness, known as Rhodesienzi and Gambienzi, posed a major public health threat, not only to Uganda, but Africa as a whole. Uganda is the only country in the world affected by both forms of the disease. The World Health Organization warned that the spread of mixed infections in tsetse flies to sleeping sickness in humans would be almost impossible to treat. That's when the SOS partners decided they had to act. Uh, around 2005, when uh, Uganda alerted the whole world and said, look, we are faced with this problem. We are likely to get a merger of the acute form, which is typically zoonotic, with the chronic form. And that would pose problems of diagnosis, and the case management, particularly as we are being we are faced with the, uh, drug resistance and a lot of treatment failures, particularly with the chronic form. Following a request from the Ugandan government for help, they created a public-private partnership made up of COC2, the coordinating office for the control of tsetse and trypanosomiasis in Uganda, representing all government ministries, iCare the charitable arm of the private equity business IK Partners, Edinburgh and Makerere Universities, together with Seva Santé Animal, a multinational veterinary healthcare business. In a collaborative effort involving products, people and know-how, they launched a mass treatment to clean cattle of the disease and therefore protect the human population. Stamp out sleeping sickness has given us an opportunity to demonstrate to a country that different groups of people can work together for the common good of the people affected by sleeping sickness. Professor John David Kabasa, the forward-thinking dean of the veterinary faculty in Kampala, motivated 50 of his final year students to go out into the communities to carry out an extremely difficult job in rough terrain dominated by papyrus swamps. SOS is one of the pillars uh, that we see is being used to transform the university because we have a clear agenda of taking the university to the community. Prior to that, researchers from Edinburgh had shown that by first treating cattle with trypanocytes to clear infection and then spraying the lower part of the body with a delta methane insecticide, this would very effectively control infections in cattle, the largest reservoir for disease transmission to humans. The intervention was a major success with 500,000 cattle being treated across seven districts in the northeastern part of Uganda. In the animal disease, the measures show that we managed to knock out the disease, which was at the level of 70% in some places, to levels of less than 5%, in some places zero. And we think those are fundamental successes. SOS achieved its initial goals the convergence was prevented, parasite infections in cattle dropped 72%, and health workers reported many fewer cases of sleeping sickness. And what next? Uh, because we always said that when we joined this, that we would like to leave something behind, but we would build sustainability into it, and that involved training and educating. To keep the disease from re-emerging, local livestock owners would be required to pay for and treat their cattle themselves. A sustainability study was carried out in the area during 2008 and uncovered real challenges. Veterinary services were most often not available and whilst cattle owners were ready to buy the products, they could not afford to travel the 60 to 70 kilometers into towns to find them. That's why I brought services nearer to them because most times you find drug shops are only located in the towns or big trading centers. They can now access services at any time within no distance. And then I'm also able to reach out and do field work. I'm able to treat for them their animals, which they appreciate. Before we came here, there used to be several outbreaks of, of uh, sleeping sickness in human beings. People who would virtually move with vector seed and veriben and veridium and have their animals sprayed and treated. The incidence has gone to 
uh, by last year there was zero uh, zero incidents of sleeping sickness. The SOS partners encouraged several of the former veterinary students to establish their own veterinary practices and product outlets, providing them with startup financing and business skills training. When I opened the, the drug shop in around 2009, uh, farmers welcomed it and it was really a rescue to them because of the problems they have with their animals, especially trypanosomiasis. At first, it was not easy for them to be accepted into the communities as they were considered as foreigners or not up to the task and had to first win respect. Uh, where my drug shop is located, I'm a foreigner in this place. I didn't grow up from here. Actually, the first time I came to establish the shop was my first time to come this side. So when I came, they received me well, although most of them were hesitant at first, being a lady and being very small. Some of them were like, oh, she can't do much. They doubted me like, for the first months. The biggest scenario I had was when some, someone was directed to me, was told, she want your animal chewed. They described me and he came. And so when he came and he met me, he thought he was going to meet someone fat and maybe a, a guy. So when he saw me, he started jeering at me and saying, this person is maybe not, he doesn't understand, is he mad? So at the end of it all, when, when we went to the animal, it was recumbent. I gave the first treatment, it got up. Then it started spreading the news. We have a doctor, He's, she's a full doctor. We finished the phase of emergence, the phase of proof of concept. Now we are going into anchoring SOS in production, community well-being, employment and development. The young vets were mentored by one of their former professors, Charles Weiswer, who also established a network to provide them with the essential products and, more importantly, the support and encouragement to succeed. Uh, I believe that the initiatives for transformation of society comes from a few, and these have to be spread to the whole society so that they adopt those values as core for transformation. In total, 11 practices were established in the region. They in turn generated more employment through the creation of a network of self-employed spray persons who treat cattle on a pay-per-head basis. I have a network of spray persons who help us uh, take the message deeper in the community and help the community to have their animals sprayed with vector seed whenever they need at a friendly cost. We basically train them to be able to apply their caricide on cattle and other animals, to be able to protect the cattle and protect the communities against sleeping sickness. A number of them have been able to, to grow, because uh, I know of three who have been able to construct permanent houses for themselves out of the business. So I think this is a quite an important uh, initiative that uh, helps communities to be able to sustain their livelihood. And I think what we've built is we've built a sustainable platform for um, delivering service to farmers and for controlling a human infectious disease, which is really quite unique. It was not perfect. As in most startup situations, businesses fail. Uh, I was uh, enjoying a lot of success many cells, but at the beginning of the year uh, we had a, a long spell which affected the first planting seasons uh, where almost most farmers realized no harvest and yet most of our farmers get some money when they sell their crop products. So the cells we are making dropped and this cut across all uh, areas. So the decline in the business, to me, has been quite unusual. It was unexpected, but these are the problems that I think we are bound to face. But by 2013, five of the vet practices were financially stable. Uh, having a shop here is, uh, I think, is something very important for the community because uh, First of all, we have been able to, we have moved a great step in achieving the ultimate aim of our start, 
that is control of sleeping sickness. When we started, the cases were quite many, could be getting over 10 to 15 cases every month. But now, for the, for the last three, three, four months, we have only been able to get one case reported here at the health center. So I think uh, that's a big achievement. The community is protected. The so-called 3V vets have extended economic benefits and services into the community by recruiting shop assistants, some open secondary outlets, and all of them train and support more than 150 spray persons to further extend the reach and impact of the program. Today, there is little evidence of the original SOS posters, but the legacy of initial intervention lives on in the community through these vets, their stores, and the spray persons, who have all benefited greatly from the intervention. Uh, this business has been a great blessing to me. Um, it has helped me cope up with life as an individual. Um, it has helped me develop as an individual. It has uh, helped me help my family members. Uh, my mom, initially my stock was very small, but uh, now like you can see it's, uh, it's quite big. And I started with one shop initially here, but of late I've been able to expand. My, my, my dream always has been, if I'm to do anything, then I want to be the one to do it best. Yeah, what, what I've benefited from this business, uh, first of all, I've been able to, to pay school fees for my brothers. And then I've also been able to, to open up a business for my sister, Maria, who is also now working here with me, assisting me. Yeah, she has a poultry business, which is currently, she's running 2,000 birds every seven weeks. It, that business came from here. And then I was able to secure a small car for my dad. Currently this business is like my livelihood. It provides for my basic necessities as, a, as a profits and it has also been able to change my life. The future of the 3V network is very bright. If we continue, the sky can be the limit. SOS Consortium are on the front line of what is currently a quiet battle against a disease that is sleeping but could flare up at any time if the communities decide to stop treating their cattle or more practices fail. You have managed to this extent and you are stamping out it. Don't you think uh, sometime in future there will be another breakout? What yeah. is the strategy down on the road? Things come, and once it is done, they, sometimes they forget about it. We can do this approach together. And what we are saying, when done together as a package, it is very effective. It is because the, they have been at the center of the problem, and they have also witnessed the dramatic uh, effect of this uh, One Health intervention, which uh, combines effective surveillance routinely in humans and block treatment in cattle and spraying them, how effective it is in reducing uh, cases. The SOS intervention has proven that committed partners can engage communities to protect themselves in a sustainable way, but the private model alone is fragile. I believe that the SOS is thinking together, working together and shaping together. Now, more than ever, is the time for government, communities and interested global health partners to come together to support such simple ways of delivering real One Health solutions. People, government, science and business at work together beyond animal health. <laughs>